We are at May 12th right now when I'm recording this, and we still do not have a head coach for the Detroit Pistons. What's going on? Who are the candidates? Are we hearing anything else? What's going on with the Pistons head coaching search? We're going to be talking about that and a ton of other stuff in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We are just 100 subscribers behind Locked On Blazers. We're trying to pass them up in the Locked On Network subscriber rankings. So if you guys want to help us get even higher as a fan base at the Locked On Networks, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Um, later on in the episode, we'll talk about potential free agent targets again. We'll talk about some draft and lottery expectations with the lottery as of this recording on the 12th. is four days away. We'll talk about that. But the first thing we'll be talking about is this head coaching search. And we brought on friend of the podcast, um, writer at Detroit Bad Boys, Jack Kelly, you can find me over on Twitter at Jack underscore Kelly underscore 313. Also, Jack and Wes Davenport, I believe I said his last name correctly, host uh, live with Detroit Bad Boys every is every Wednesday? Every Thursday night from 8 every, every Thursday night they host the live, so definitely go check that out if you guys want even more Pistons content uh, in your guys' lives, for sure. Check that out. Um, but Jack, man, appreciate you coming on. I know it's it, you, he just told me that it's actually Saturday where he's at. It's Friday <laughs> when I'm recording this, but it's Saturday over in Australia. So I appreciate you coming on and making time on to hop on the podcast. Um, so, like I said, it's the 12th, and we still don't have a head coach for the Detroit Pistons. Now we I, we've been told who the three finalists are for I, I believe like a week and a half now. Week week and a half now we know who the three finalists were. It's Kevin Ollie, Jaron Collins, and we got um, Charles Lee. So what's going on? We, we, according to Sean's report, interviews should be over by now. They should have had their last interviews um, either to either yesterday, today, or maybe tomorrow's last interview. But really, it sounded like what, what Sean's reported a few days ago, that the interviewing with those three guys, with Tom Gore going out to L.A., et cetera, it should be over. And we still haven't got any news four days from the lottery. What do you what do you make of all this? What do you think's going on? Well, yeah, thanks for having me on, Koo. But um, to the coaching stuff, it's it's weird, man. I, I honestly thought we would have had an answer by now with the lottery coming up in is it four four days, whatever it is. It's really close by. I think, especially with the reporting about the three leading candidates meeting with Tom Gores a week ago, you would think especially we would have an answer coming to the end of this week, but. Um, as it is right now, it's Friday night and we still have nothing. So for me, like my mind immediately goes to, are they waiting to see what happens with some of these playoff coaches? So we just saw the Suns flame out last night in pretty embarrassing fashion for the second season in a row. I would, I mean, I think it's only logical to think Monty Williams' job could be on the line here. What does that sort of look like? We know Monty Williams has ties to Troy going back to OKC. Um, I don't know, man. It just feels like why is this taking so long? I mean, we saw Coach Bud fired. I don't think we've heard anything Pistons related there, but are the Detroit front office waiting for potentially a veteran head coach like Monty Williams? Or, I mean, I think this is a long shot, but, you know, Doc Rivers, who knows what happens there if Philly don't get across the line in Boston Sunday. So mm, because you would feel like they've got more than enough information on the three candidates that have been leading the charge in Lee Collins and um, I don't know, the last name slipped me, but we know who those three candidates are. So yeah, it just leaves me wondering, are we looking at, are they looking at some of these playoff coaches? So it's, it's definitely, it's, it's been interesting to me for sure. Because, like you said, we it, it, at this point they should have a, a good grasp on the three guys that we've heard about for, for heard about for a while now. Um, we've heard about, like you said, Ali, Lee, and Collins. 
And according to Sean's report, they've been, they, they are in LA. They had interviews with owner Tom Gores. And, you know, you think that, you know, not to say they need to be rushing it. I don't think they're, we're saying that they need to be fast with it, but, you know, just assuming that, you, I, at least I assume that we would have a, I would say by the end of this weekend, I thought we would have an, have an answer. Now we have two more days before I thought we'd get an answer before the lottery, but maybe, who knows? Maybe the the results of the lottery plays into a part with some coaches. Maybe maybe some coach. I know Troy Weaver said it wouldn't for them, but maybe it actually is with some coaches. Maybe that's something playing into it. Um, you brought up potential coaches that are being fired. Uh, Bud was fired, but we haven't heard anything with uh, the Pistons, like you mentioned. Uh, Monty Williams was an assistant coach with the OKC Thunder uh, back in 15 and 16, so he does have a little ties with um, Troy Weaver, and we all know that if you have some ties with Troy Weaver, you are going to be considered – for whatever position he's looking for. So it could be Monty after how the Suns went out, like you said, back-to-back years in embarrassing fashion. He could be on his way out, and maybe the Pistons are waiting to see what happens with Monty. Um, it, it is interesting. I, I will say that I think that they'll have an answer by the end of this weekend, hopefully. I don't think Weaver wants to – I don't think it has to happen for the lottery. I just don't think that's like a priority of his. I, I don't think he – I said this when they – initially fired or not fired, but moved Dwayne Casey up into the front office. Uh, I initially said, I, I felt like from what Weaver said that he doesn't feel like the results of the lottery should be needed to, to recruit a coach to this team. He felt, honestly, it sounded like he would find it a little disrespectful or a little, he was kind of prideful about what he's done. At least what it sounded like to me that, Hey, why do you need to see the results of this lottery to want to coach this team and be a part of this organization? We don't want that to be like the main reason why you're coming here. So, Things change. That could be just PR stuff. That could be just coach speak to the public. Um, but I would assume at least still at, to this point, I expect to see an answer to the coaching search by the end of this weekend. So I would say like the 14th or 15th would be my guess. Yeah, for sure. I think it is important to note that um, it isn't the NBA draft coming up. If it was the NBA draft, we would definitely want this coaching decision organized earlier. But I think in terms of the lottery it is just a lottery positioning. Like it's not, we're not selecting players. It's not, it's not free agency. So ultimately the head coach doesn't really have a lot of sway over what happens lottery night. It's more so the weeks following the lottery now knowing what pick they have preparing for that, figuring out how they want to, the coach wants to mold this roster um, with Troy. So I'm with you, though. I would like to think a coaching decision is made soon, but you also made a good point as well. Like, there's, there isn't, whilst we do want a decision made soon, there's also not a huge reason to rush right now. Like, it's not, it's not the worst thing that there isn't a coach right now. I think just Pistons fans have seen Rockets. The Rockets make a pretty quick decision with their head coach, hiring Ime Yudoka. Um, and we've sort of just been left in the lurch for the past couple of weeks, just sort of waiting for some news. Um, we've had tidbits here and there from the beat reporters, but um, yeah, it, I think a decision will be made in the next few days. I think the the biggest question that, that I'm having, and you kind of mentioned it too, is that we know that they've, it sounds like at least according to the report we heard over the last week, that they've had the interviews with Tom Gores over this week with LA, in LA with Ollie, with Lee, with Collins. And if those are the three guys and their interviews are over with, I think the question isn't so much, uh, why aren't you hurrying to get this hiring done? It's, what are you waiting for? And you mentioned that. Like, what is it now? What are you waiting for? Like, why? You figure that they would probably have, like, an answer if they're done with their three finalist interviews and now they're deciding. What what are they waiting for now? So now that's the real question. Are they waiting for Monty Williams? Do they think there's a potentially another head coach that could be fired that maybe they're interested in? You mentioned Doc Rivers. I, I, I also agree that would be a long shot. But – is that the kind of thing that they're waiting on? Um, so that's the question I really have. It's going to be interesting to see. This week is going to be just a just. I, I almost said fun filled week, but it could very well go quickly from fun to torture. Like it could, if the business yeah. were to go from one to five, I think all of us would be just heartbroken if they were to fall to five after after um, with yeah with Wemby sure. at the top of the draft at the season they just witnessed. And they fall to five, man. That would be tough. But it's going to be an action packed week in a in during a part of the off season where you know teams are playing in the playoffs you got legit teams playing and then you got teams like the pistons whose seasons are over they haven't really had much happen and this is like they're like this is like the teams like the pistons the rockets the 
the Hornets, like this is their championship, really. Like this lottery and then the draft, like this time right here, this is where stuff heats up. So it's going to be an action filled week. I can't wait to see what happens. And that's that will lead us into our our next topic, which will be what are our expectations for the lottery and the draft? Like, according to wherever the Pistons were to end up in each spot, what would be our expectations as of right now on May 12th? And heading into that, before we get to our ad, I just want to click a sim real quick because I've been doing random sims, sims on Tankathon all day. Hasn't been good to me. So let's do one right here. The Pistons fall to three in this one. Okay, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. <laughs> I, five five has been the most popular one that's been killing me. But three, three is not bad. We'll take that. We'll take that. Um, but stay tuned. We'll talk about some more draft stuff and lottery stuff when we come back. But first, I've got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know that the part will fit or you'll get your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply at ebaymotors.com. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. All right, Jack. So the lottery, like I said... There's going to be teams like the Pistons championship. Like this will be either a very big, especially in this draft, especially in this draft, the Pistons were to get number one. I I, I remember when the Pistons won number one with the K draft. And I, I, I used to, I would come on the podcast and talk about how this is like, this is re-energized the city. I would go to pick up games at the gym at LA fitness at, you know, in, at a park, whatever. I'd just go to random pickup games and be playing and the Pistons never used to get brought up. No one ever talked about the Pistons. But I'd go to these hoop sessions at random places. All of a sudden, I'm here on the sideline, bro. The Pistons are going to get Kate Cunningham, man. Like, oh, my God, they're going to turn things around, like, blah, blah, blah. The hype around it after the Pistons won number one, like, re-energized the city in ways that I don't feel like it's happened in a in a, quite a while. If the Pistons were to get number one in this draft, like, I think it would be that times 10. Like if they were to get Wemby, it would be it, it would it, I, I couldn't even imagine like the energy that would be around the team, around the city. I couldn't even imagine it. So with that said, we all are aware that according to percentages, the most likely pick is five. So Jack, what is your just overall feelings? We'll get into potential picks at potential slots, but just what's your overall feelings about uh, the the Pistons position right now heading into the lottery ah oh, man pick uh for me I uh, look there is options of pick five but I'm really hoping it's at least four at worst I mean I won't be devastated and you know that upset with five but it's uh, for me it's a there's four players I really think can make a difference on this team next season um so if they if they were to land at pick five the guys I have around that fifth pick are Cam Whitmore, um, Asar Thompson, Taylor Hendricks, maybe, even though I don't think he's fit with the Pistons, he's great. Um, but I just feel like there's a drop-off after that top four of Wemby's in a tier of his own, Scoot's in a tier of his own for mine, and then it's Amen, and Brand- Amen Thompson and Brandon Miller at that 3-4, however you want it. Um, so if they were to fall to five, look, I, I'd, I'd be I'd be pretty devastated in the moment, but I would come around to it. And I do think if they do fall to five as well, that is a potential draft night trade situation where the Pistons could look to trade back with, say, potentially an Orlando Magic who have two lottery picks once again. That's an option. Um, but I guess that that's where my head's at with pick five. So, look... I- I'm not going to show a code for anybody. I'm going to be completely honest with you. If the Pistons fall to five, I will be hosting a live right after the lottery on the Lockdown Pistons YouTube channel. I may have tears running down my eyes. I may be like just, just an absolute mess. I've been – okay, so before I get into like other prospects, 
the Pistons deserve one, man. As of this past season, and with it, and especially this draft, because even in Cade's draft, even though we believe Cade's number one, even though I wanted Cade number one from the get go, I thought Cade was the number one prospect. There were people who thought, you know, maybe Evan Mobley could be number one. Like, and there's people that argue to this day right now that maybe Evan Mobley should have gone one. I still think it's Cade. I think Cade is being forgotten about because he got injured. But my point is, is that there's some people out there that think Evan Mobley is going to be the best prospect from the class, whether we disagree or not. Wemby is a slam dunk. Wemby literally changes the the like is franchise altering. That's how good Wemby. Wemby might be the greatest prospect at least since LeBron, like probably since LeBron. And he may be an even better prospect than LeBron. Like that's how generational this dude is. If the Pistons were to get him with Cade, Ivy, and Duran, it would be like, we're talking, I don't want to get too crazy with it, but like the future in Detroit is looking insanely like blinding. It's like not just bright, it's blinding your eyes on how bright it is. Like that's crazy. So I desperately, I'm begging, please. The Pistons just stay at one. Well, but, like, go sorry ahead, go to ahead. jump in here, Wes. Oh, Kuru, sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Um, but that the idea of Wemby coming to Detroit to a team I've supported, just I cannot compute it. Like, <laughs> honestly, man, like my – so we have a league in Australia called the AFL, which is like a football league. And my team is also like a small market team. So I can't compute having like the NBA's like hottest prospect like – the guy that everyone like i just don't even know how to like it doesn't even like i can't imagine it so because when you're right when when we got that number one pick with Cade, like that's honestly for better or worse when that when we got pick one that was the most excited i've ever been as a <laughs> yeah. i'm serious like the feeling in my my like heart like i was like racing like i was like i didn't even know it was like possible to feel like this as a fan. <laughs> so like if they were to get number one and Victor Wembanyama is there on the board, like, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I just had to add that in. <laughs> no, seriously. And that's why I've been saying on the podcast, it's like Wemby or bust. Now, do I mean it literally that if you don't get Wemby, you're getting a bust? No. But it, I mean it as in, like, I don't think there's another prospect. Like, as much as I think Scoot is a great prospect, and he's I, people talk about him like he's the best point guard prospect since D Rose. As much as, a, as good of a prospect Scoot is, I don't think anybody else in this draft is changing for like would absolutely just change the Pistons franchise and just take them to a level that we've never like it would just be crazy. Like so that's why I'd be saying one being bus. Not not literally, but like my God, man. Like the the even if I would be happy with Scoot, I would be so happy with Scoot. I'd be so happy with Amon. But it's it, like it wouldn't even come close to matching. <laughs> like it wouldn't even come close to matching Wembenyama, dude. It's crazy. But the reality is, is, despite the fact that Pistons finished at number one in the lottery, the top three, um, the top three play, uh, teams have the same chance at number one. So they don't necessarily have the best chance at number one, despite the fact that they finished with the worst record in the league. So it's very likely the Pistons won't be getting number one. You kind of hit on it a little bit. How would you feel? Again, you kind of already said it, but what pick would you feel – would it get to where you're just like the most uncomfortable? I believe you already said five, but if you'd like to just dive into a little deeper into why it is five and not four, like four is your cutoff. Why is it four? And just dive a little further into it. I know you touched on it already, but yeah, just go sure. a little deeper. I, think, I just think those top four prospects, like when we, we don't, we don't need to discuss. We, we know about Victor Wembanyama. Scoot, I think he's in a tier of his own. I think he can just create advantages at will. Like he's just, He's a tad under, like he's six foot two, but he's just got that like Donovan Mitchell frame. Like he's just going to be, dude. And like an he's elite six guy. two. He's six two, but I saw a picture of him. I swear to God, I saw a picture yeah. of him like shooting in a warm ups without a shirt on, and I and it got put on Twitter. And I thought this was like an NFL player like playing basketball. I swear to God, yeah. I was like, who is this? And they're like, that's Scoot. I'm like, my God, he looks like a linebacker. It's insane. Like I, I don't. His genetics are insane. He's got like a six foot eight, six foot nine wingspan. Yeah. Like, so he might not have the height, but he, he makes up for it with everything else. And then, a man Thompson, who I've seen you pumping out some draft stuff, and you've done a podcast breaking down his game. Um, I also think he has those advantage creation aspects. He's got the playmaking, the first step, defensive potential. Um, 
yes, the shooting's a concern, but I mean, I just think he he's a, like ability to create shots for himself and others um, is just something I value really highly. And then Brandon Miller, what he lacks probably on the interior in terms of getting past guys and getting to the rim. He's an elite shooter. We can't deny that. He has the tools to be a good defender and he rebounds, a really good rebounder for a wing. I just think those just have like multiple things they do like really, really well. For And then when you get to like Whitmore, Thompson, Hendricks, I just think they're more, Whitmore is the one who has the star potential to me, but the, other, the rest just sort of feel like role players to me. And I'm sure there, there will be one that's going to pop and we'll look back and go, how did, how did we miss that? But right. mm, that that's for me why it's a, there's a deviation at four. Yeah, and I, I, before I say anything, I just want to make this clear to everybody, man. Like the draft, I don't like calling it a crapshoot, but like it really is. Like you, there's like you mentioned, there's going to be a guy from this draft that maybe gets drafted ninth or something. People are going to be like, how did he fall to ninth? And there may be a guy who gets drafted like fourth and we're all like, okay, how did he get drafted fourth instead of like farther down? Like, that's just the kind of thing that happens. The, all you can do is is do your own research, do your own scouting, and if you trust your process, and then you come to your decision. As long as you trust your process, that's the best you can do here. So that's that's really how the draft is. Now, with that said, I kind of see it the same way as you. I got Wemby one, Scoot two in his own tier, and then three, I got Amon Thompson in his own tier, and then I got Brandon Miller with the rest of the guys. I I have a Brand Miller episode coming out next week. It should be out on Monday, guys. I've been hyping it up for a minute now. Um, I'll give you guys all my thoughts on Brand Miller. You guys have already heard, those of you who listen to the podcast, my thoughts on Amon Thompson, but I'll give it real quickly with you, Jack, is that a lot of the things you mentioned is exactly how I feel about him. Scoot, I'm not going to get into Scoot because Scoot will get his own episode in like a, in like probably two weeks or whatever Um, if the pisses were to be in the range of him anyways. So he'll get his own episode at that point. But Amon Thompson, dude, his shot is a struggle. It's definitely, it's like a long journey he's going to have with that jumper, but he's going to be like a 99th percentile athlete, whatever court he's on. I don't care who's on the floor with him. He's going to be a 99th percentile athlete. That's He's just a wild athlete. His first step is crazy. His handle at his size is good enough to break dudes down. And he's going to be like a consistent paint touch for me. I, I feel like I don't know how teams are going to be able to stop him from being a paint touch. Like it's just going to be automatic. And combine that, it's not just enough to be a paint touch. If you can then score for yourself at the rim while also creating for people off the gravity you're making in the paint, he can do both at a really high level. He's a really good playmaker too. So it's like, and I've I've t- talked about his defense. His defense is a little up and down because of the competition at OTE, and he was oftentimes kind of disengaged and kind of. There was times I was watching him on defense. It was kind of like he also was looking at like what. Am I really taking this serious? Like, is this OTE? Like, am I? That's how I felt like sometimes watching him on defense. But when he was locked in, he he would make game changing plays, weak side defender on rotation or on weak side rim protector, I should say, rotations. Like, I understand the shot, but there's way too many tools and way too many other things that he does at such a high level and can do at a high level that I, I've said it on the podcast when I did his breakdown. I felt like even if he weren't to become a good shooter, there's still a pathway for him to becoming an all-star without being a good jump shooter. Like that's how good his other and his, that's how good the other things are, how good of an athlete he is. So I have him three. And then after that, I have Brandon Miller four right now, but I'm getting into Cam Whitmore, Hendricks, um, Asar, uh, Amon's brother. And we'll see why I have him with, but I have four at Brandon Miller. So that's where my cutoff would be three, because I think I have Amon in a, in a tier above uh, Brandon Miller. But I completely understand if someone have four because they have Amon and Bram Miller in the same tier. I think the overall like point you're getting to and I'm getting to is like once you get past your third tier guys, now it's like okay, it's it's going to be tough. You have your third tier with Amon and Bram. My third tier is just Amon in there, so we agree about that. I would be actually I probably would be okay with four because I think there's a good chance that someone would take Bram Miller three and Amon would still fall to four for the Pistons. So that's why I'm probably in the same boat as you actually. Yeah, for sure. I, I think, um, I guess just on that pick five, would you be open to trading that draft night? You know, that's a, God, it's a tough question. You know what? Let's, let's, let's save that. We'll answer that when we come back from the ad break, let the ad break get in and then we'll come back and talk about that. Cause that's a very interesting. I've talked about it on the podcast before, but it's interesting. I'd like to get, get your thoughts on it as well. So 
hear from some of our sponsors, and when we come back, we'll talk about possibly trading number five. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. That's another great way to support the podcast. All right, so trading number five. Jack asked me if I would trade number five if they failed there. For a, a, a non-rookie, a non-player in the draft class, it would – it depends who the player is. And I think the value that I would want back in five, when we're, if we're talking about like current NBA players, I I don't think there's probably a good value trade out there that I would like for a current NBA player. Cause I'm probably, I'm, I'm probably asking for too much. And I don't, I, I think that probably would take that away when it comes to trading it for like other picks. I 100% would trade it for like the both Orlando picks. I don't know if Orlando would be interested in that. Um, Right now on Tankathon, they have Orlando at six and 11. If Orlando won to trade six and 11 for five or maybe like seven and 11, or I don't know how many like different variations could happen, but if Orlando wanted to trade up to five with their later lottery picks, I, I think I probably 100% would do that. And I would probably take two wings. I'm not going to lie. Like at 11, if they were at 11, I, that's probably where I'm looking at like Grady Dick. And I, I really would like him on the team. That That's what I was going to throw at you. I think if the magic say they end up with nine and, 12 say they fall with both picks and the pistons fall to five that's a scenario i could maybe see happening and that's a trade i would entertain no, um, i would do the same and because yeah there's players like grady dick i even like anthony black a lot um yeah jaris jaris walker my bad um is another guy i could see troy really liking i'm not sure how much i like him with detroit but he's still like a really uh, versatile player that could be sort of anything. So that that's where I'm at with the trading aspect of five. I mean, and, and we'll move on to just briefly talking about free agent targets uh, quickly, but um, the mock draft over at Tankathon at like, these are some of the names that would be around from eight to 13. Let's just say around there. You got Cam Whitmore at eight, Grady Dick nine, Taylor Hendricks at 10, 11, Bryce Sensenbaugh, I hope I said his name right, and then Cason Wallace and Nick Smith right behind him. So there's a lot of guys there, and, and we talked about Cam Whitmore possibly at five. Jairus Walker, Tank of has him going seven. So these are guys, like the pick at five, there's probably like six different guys that are like legit possibilities at five that also could be there at nine, 10, and 11. So unless, I hope, honestly, this would be my hope. If the Pistons were to fall to five and Orlando would have, like like you said, nine or 12 or something like that, I hope there's someone that Orlando really has identified that they love and they're worried about him not being there. So they do do that up to five. And then if I were the Pistons, I would trade back and I would take like, I mean, if Cam Whitmore was there at nine, I probably would take Cam Whitmore, but like I would probably take, Oh my God, man. I don't even know who could possibly, it's so crazy. I definitely would be looking at, I don't think Grady Dick would go ahead of that, but I would take Grady Dick and then probably like, like I said, probably like a Taylor Hendricks. Maybe if Jairus falls, I take Jairus too. Um, Cam Whitmore, like all those guys are potentially there at that point. So I think the Pistons could do really well. All those guys really are like small four power forwards. And I yeah. think that's what the Pistons really need. The last thing, the one the one guy I would throw in there to take with like pick 13 or something, if he's there, is a guy, um, GG Jackson. I've seen um, Raphael Barlow, who I think NBA, who does NBA big board for Locked On. Yep. He has him at pick five, I believe. And He's like an 18-year-old who sort of went to a not ideal situation in South Carolina who, yeah, I've watched some film on him and I, I can see, like, I, he's someone I'd like to take a flyer on or oh, with a late lotto pick. There's a lot of potential there. It, it's crazy. And we're not going to have a lot, uh, as much time for free agent targets, but forget it. It's crazy with the, the draft this year is that I, a lot of the draft guys that I follow and, and I really trust I see them talk about like, this is like a 20 man draft. Like this is a 20, 25 man draft, but you see some guys going 21st for some guys. And then other people, they have them at like eighth at seventh. Like it's, it's so scattered because there's so many, like, I, I feel like I've seen a lot of people say there's a lot of good potential role players in this draft. And it's just like, it's all over. It's just scattered all over the place. So it's really, it, we don't know how it's going to shake out. It's going to be wild. So like the reason why I'm, another reason why I mentioned that is that I have seen Gigi Jackson soaring up a lot of people's big boards. And then you've got Tankathon has him at 21. And there's a bunch of guys like in between there. 
that I've seen some people be really high on and some people not be as high on. Like Nick Smith, I've seen some people be really high on Nick Smith and some people be not as high on him. Jet Howard, same thing. Keontae George, same thing. Jordan Hawkins, I've seen him go up and down. Chris Murray, I've seen him be projected in the back end of the first round, beginning of the second. Tangathon got some 19th. So it's like these prospects, there's going to be so much talent throughout like the mid the back end lottery all the way through like the first round, it's going to be, it's going to be fun to watch. Not even just as a Pistons fan, like just as an NBA fan too, like how this shakes out. Cause it's really, who knows how it's going to go. So um, I guess I'll get your quick thoughts on this. Cause I don't want to keep you guys here too long. I don't want to keep Jack here too long. Free agent target. So James Edwards, the third came out with an article the other day for the athletic, um, his top 10 free agent targets. I didn't go through his whole ten, top 10 targets because you guys should be going out there and reading it yourselves. Um, but there were three guys that I mentioned from that article that I also have targeted. And the three guys were um, Yuto Watanabe. Um, oh, my God. I'm drawing a blank now on the other guy. Oh, Cam Johnson, obviously. Cam Johnson, Yuto Watanabe. And the one guy that I would take, if they want to take a shot on him, I, I could see it. And you and Wes actually kind of talked about this on live. And that's Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish is a, a guy who you're betting on just potential because it hasn't worked out. It, he's been like four different teams. I think three to four different teams, like New York, Atlanta, Portland. Is that it? I think it's those yeah, are three Portland. teams. Yeah, yeah, so he's went through multiple different teams. This When he went to Portland, he did show a little bit more, but you're really at that point betting on his body and his like archetype at that point. So if they wanted to take a risk like that where they're going and betting on a player in the free agency, like a young guy to try to grow, I think he's probably the best option if that's the route they wanted to take with it instead of just getting like a guy they know for sure will impact. If they want to go a guy who can for sure impact and provide a role, I got Cam Johnson. I got Yuto Watanabe up there. Um, I think Yuto Watanabe would, would be really cheap and would really fill what the Pistons need. There's a few other guys that that I'd like to mention, but they're also on James' list, So and I don't want to sound like I'm just like, you know, copying his, his article. So I just want to keep it at that. So... Do you have the same targets? You, are you interested in any of the same? I know you guys aren't yeah. very high in Cam Reddish. And personally, I'm not crazy high on I just can see the vision. If, they, if they're if they looking for another flyer to take that they think could grow with the young core, I could see him being the guy. But wh- wh- who are some main targets for you? Man, this this free agency class is so it's, like... It's not good. I just wow. say it's, 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 like, it's not, it's not <laughs> it's it. It's so not like, it. Man, I keep going on spot rack... The spot track, so just hoping like I'm gonna see some interesting names. Like <laughs> I just quickly had a look at some names before, and I love the Yuta Watanabe. Like that, that's a really he'd be a fun player to add. I can't imagine he's going to cost a lot, like some of these other targets that get mentioned on the wings for the Pistons. Um, he's just a ridiculous corner shooter from three. I think he shot like over fifty percent. On the at one point, he was definitely. I don't know if he ended the season with that. I'm gonna check real quick, but he was, yeah, at one point <laughs> in the season, he was shooting like 54% from the corners. It was like, what the hell? It was insane. And he'd be a real like, he's like, he's surprisingly a bit older. He's 28 years old. So I think he fits that sort of veteran wing off the bench. Um, if you have injuries, he can start. I really like that him as a target for Detroit. I feel like a lot 51% of 51% real quick, 51.4 yeah. from the corners. What was the percentage? Sorry. 51.4% from the corners. Yeah, uh, And 53% of his attempts were just from the corners. So that's like majority of his attempts. I mean, Emmett, man, if you got Kay Cunningham running pick and roll and that baseline defender tags a roll, right. you got what an RB there. Like that's that's fun, especially as a piece off the bench. So right. I really like that signing. Um, I like Cam Johnson. Like I just, I just can't see it happening. Like it's going to cost a ton. And I just can't see the net sort of, I guess it would probably be a sign and trade. Uh, um, but yeah, I do like the idea of Cam Johnson. He's sort of everything Detroit needs on the wing. Great shooter, pretty good, uh, decent defender and decent size. He's 27, 28 years old. So he's been in the league. He's played playoffs, finals. Um, but man, honestly, in terms of like realistic <laughs> free agents, I'm looking at a long list here and there's there's not much there, I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't have much for you. You sort of covered it really well. So this is the thing about this draft class, or not draft class, this free agency class, that I pulled away from it. (laughs) It's not great, but 
there is a lot of depth with the wing options. They're just not like great wing options. <laughs> like there's a lot of <laughs> wings you could pick from. Like um, there's another guy I'd be cool with them going after. I really like Kelly Oubre as a player. I think he could be a uh, high energy scorer off the bench for him. If they want to go Kelly Oubre at like 15 mil. Um, Josh Hart, I don't think he would come to Detroit. He kind of talked bad about Detroit the other, like a few years ago. I don't think that's realistic, but Josh Hart is like another one. Um, Gary Trent Jr. I know he has a player right now, a player option. So I don't know if he actually will be a free agent, but that's another one. Um, uh, another guy that I see a lot of Pistons fans talking about, Grant Williams, a guy that could potentially be available, Tory Craig, a guy that could be available. Like these are the names we're talking about, though. You guys, like, as you guys are listening, you guys know what, like, like these are. This is the type of players we're talking about here. We're not talking about like some of them. I, some of the names I just mentioned maybe aren't even like legit stars or less good role players. Some of them definitely could like spot start, um, but. Yeah, that's like the free agency class the Pistons have, which really has me believing. Like, we don't want we don't have to get too far into this. I, I don't want to make, get a whole new segment. But that's what really makes me believe the Pistons may not be going all out next year, yeah. unless they get like a big trade or something. Because there's just not like like who is it that they're going after in free agency? Like, this is going to make this big home run that oh we're we're really going for it next year. Who Kristaps? Like oh, who man. who is like who is it? So like I feel like. There, I, I'll say this. I'll, I'll, I'll say this will be the last thing I say. I'll give it to you. I hope that's what they do because they, if they were to go to this free agency class and overpay someone long term money just to like because they panicked or something, like I, that would be catastrophic. That that would not be good at all because now you're handicapping long term flexibility because you panicked in the off season and overpaid for somebody that probably wasn't worth it. Like that that would be my worst case scenario. But that's that that's how I feel on it right now. Yeah, I'm with you. I think that there's really, in terms of realistic options, like I just, like, it just doesn't feel like there's a guy there this summer. Like, I'm sure there'll be rumors with Grant Williams, Jeremy Grant, but it just doesn't feel like, like Cam Johnson, we've mentioned them, just doesn't feel like there's that guy to help propel this team if you're going to pay someone 28 million plus a season or 25, whatever the, whatever you want to start the number at. Um, and like, the last thing you want to do is stuff up your cap space for the next few seasons. Uh, I mean, the thing with the Pistons and their rebuild is there's just because of the picks they sort of owe in the future, they're sort of forced right now to be patient and cap space is the like trying to acquire a star. They don't have the future first to offer that the other teams have. Like, um, so the last thing you want to do is burn that cap space um so yeah i think unless they add Wemby, uh, i do think we're in for another season of development and growth i don't think that means 20 wins i think there'll be more wins i just think um yeah it's it's tough there's just not there's not a lot out there on the free agency market this summer to improve from there at least yeah and co- combined with with what you just said and then combine that with um Oh my God, I'm drawing a blank now. Oh, Howard Beck, when he was on the podcast a few days ago, um, he kind of talked about it as well, how there's going to be teams in the East. Like if you just look at the standings, you look at the free agency class, you look at possibly if they don't get Wemby, the other guys that could get the free agency class. Um, just like if you look at all that together, and then you look at the Eastern Conference standings, like who is who is these teams that the Pistons are just jumping off of this, off of like this off season? Like who is it? who are they just leaping into the playoffs? It's It's – if we're being realistic, it's just that's just not gonna gonna happen. So, do you want to panic and try force it to happen before it has before it should, or should you just continue to be patient? And understand, like, look, it is what it is. We gotta be continue to be patient. We gotta bank on our development and just keep it going until there's the right time to do it. I really do think the most likely scenario we see in free agency is like what we've seen from Weaver thus far, like with Josh Jackson contracts, Trey Lyles contracts, with um, um, who was the other contract? Uh, Frank Jackson's contract these two year contracts with like team options on the, on the second year to just keep your cap, uh, your cap room flexible to where you're not locked into any long-term money. You're not stuck in any other area. Um, and then you, they're, they're good enough contracts potentially that you could also trade. Like you saw with Trey Lyles, they were able to get a guy they wanted in Marvin Bagley. We don't have to talk about Marvin Bagley's contract, but like, that's the whole idea of it while also remaining flexible, flexible when, anything you want becomes available. So I think that's probably what's going to happen this off season. The only guy that I could see them maybe splashing at, I mean, well, Cam Johnson, I guess probably would be a splash because he's a restricted free agent, but 
The only other guy I could potentially see them trying to go after if they really want to go after it is Porzingis because he fits like that too big thing. But I don't think they'd want to go after Porzingis either. So it's like, I I, I just don't see it this yeah. offseason unless they can pull off a trade or they get Wemby, like you said. I don't I don't see it happening like that this year. Yeah, for sure. And just the last thing I'll just add is I do feel like as this season was painful. Like, there's no doubt about it. It was absolutely painful as a fan, content creator. <laughs> You as a podcaster somehow coming up here five times a week and talking about this team for 40 minutes to an hour a night. But I think if Kay does play 65 games this season, the team naturally would have won a few more games and, you know, a lot would be different. So I feel like heading into next season, it, it's not like I think fans right now are just exhausted and just want some hope. So I, I think next season, even if they do win 30 games and, They've got Cade and Amen Thompson and Jade and Ivy. I do think there's enough there for fans to really get around and there's plenty to look forward to. It's just Cade being out really, really derailed this season. Completely agree. And the last point I'll make with that to just buffer what you said, I said this in the podcast when I did my season review. People were saying, oh, the Pistons need to jump up 20-plus wins. In a positive way, you can look at it as, is if Cade was healthy, do they win like 30 games? No. But I think they probably would be like around 22 to 24 wins if Cade was healthy. Like maybe he adds five extra wins. So now looking at them potentially winning 32 plus, 32 plus games next year isn't like a 15 plus win jump. It's like actually would have been like a 10 plus, 9 plus win jump, which I know you actually wrote about for Detroit Bad Boys, like the yeah. the amount of jumps that you've seen from guys at the bottom or teams at the bottom of the league. Um, definitely you guys should go check that out from Jack as well at Detroit Bad Boys. Um, but that's all I've got for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you, Jack, for joining us, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. I know I'm about to be going to sleep, but you're going to have a full day to go enjoy. Uh, so go enjoy that, man. You guys can follow Jack on Twitter at Jack underscore Kelly underscore 313. He writes at Detroit Bad Boys. And like I said, every Thursday night, him and West Davenport, also of Detroit Bad Boys, host a live at Detroit Bad Boys YouTube and on their Twitter, uh, on their Twitter feed, a live so you guys can go in there, talk with them, ask for questions, et cetera, et cetera. So definitely go check that out. Um, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every single day. Hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe. Enjoy these playoffs. And peace out. <laughs>